What's going on, everybody? It's Monday. Time for Swift News. Quick reminder, as always, the links to everything I share here will be in the GitHub repo. The link to that repo is in the description. And if you find something you think would be great for Swift News throughout the week, uh, tweet it out with hashtag Swift News, and I'll check that before the next episode. All right, let's throw up the rundown and get into the show. First up, we have an update on Swift WASM or Swift WebAssembly. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't know anything about WebAssembly, but I wanted to share this just in case maybe you're just learning Swift and you're coming from that world, or, or maybe you're familiar with that world for some other reason, and this is a great crossover of your skills uh, and you're not aware of it, definitely check it out. But you know, as we know, Swift is expanding, Swift for Windows, server-side Swift. Here we have Swift WebAssembly. So still very early, but you know, we are in these early phases of Swift expanding. So like I said, if this does cross paths with your interest or your skills, and you weren't aware of it, I wanted to share it so you could check it out. Um, but this is just the update blog, you know, what's going on, what's new in Swift uh, WASM, some good first issues for you to start with. You can check out the documentation, some JavaScript libraries, et cetera. Um, but again, wanted to share just in case this matched up with your interests. Next up, we have a tutorial here from Chris Tapps Grinberg's uh, how to select images using the PH Picker View Controller with Swift UI. So if you're not familiar with PH Picker View Controller, it's how you can pick photos from the user's photo library. Uh, but this is the newer version. Like we've always had a, you know, a picture picker, I can't remember the exact name of it. Um, but this is the new one announced uh, in WWDC 2020. So this is the new stuff. And Chris Tapp shows you how to use it with Swift UI. If you're familiar with Swift UI, you can probably guess uh, you have to use the old uh, UI view controller representable with coordinators and all that stuff. If you're not familiar with UI view controller representable and coordinators, again, Chris Tapps has got you covered with this tutorial. So if you're working on an app or just want to do a side little project on how to pick photos from the user's camera roll, maybe you want them to set a profile picture or something, here you go. Chris Tapps has got you covered. Moving on, I got an article about dates from Harsil Shah here called Wrangling Time. And I, like, I liked how he opened up his post here, right? The overarching theme of what I write about on this website is things that I used to once hate, then understood, and now continue to hate, but for different reasons. And uh, of course, date definitely falls uh, in that category. If you've ever worked with dates, you, you, you feel the pain. But uh, this is a good primer. Again, if you haven't worked with dates or maybe you haven't worked with them in a while and you wanna understand kind of like maybe why they're so tricky to work with, uh, I'll point out two quick points here, right? Because date like really isn't a date, right? As he says right there at the top, right? So you may print out date and it'll print out this nice January 1st, this thing that looks like a date, right? But they said it's slightly misleading. Despite what the preview shows, date has no concept of like month, day, hour, year, right? It's really just the number of seconds that have passed, uh, you know, since January 1st, uh, 2001. So like that makes that kind of math easy to deal with because you're dealing with just one number, like, you know, whatever, 342,000 seconds, I don't even know, whatever. Um, however, when you're dealing with the concepts of like months, year, dates, and here's the, the point I want to get into, right? You know, while dealing with time measured in seconds can be reduced to pure math, right? It's pretty simple. Date math isn't quite simple because we have time zones, leap seconds, leap years, daylight savings times. And then on top of that, there's like all kinds of different calendars with their own like structure. So like I said, dealing with dates can be a pain when you take all that into account. So again, check out this article to kind of understand why they're a pain. And next time you're dealing with them, hopefully that will help you out, you know, make it an easier process. Next, I have an article from Antoine Vanderly here about what is a computed property in Swift. And this is a fundamental aspect of, of learning how to use Swift. Um, so if you're just starting out, you're just learning, definitely check out this article. Or if you're experienced, maybe review it. Maybe there's something you missed here. But Antoine goes through, you know, what is a computed property? When, when should you use it? I'll get to that in a second here, right? You know, when should I use a computed property? And then another common question uh, that he addresses down here towards the bottom is, you know, when should I use a computed property versus a method? Because sometimes they look like they do like the same thing. So like, when would I use each one, right? So again, computed properties, pretty basic aspect of learning Swift. So, you know, if you're experienced, get some review, or if you're just learning and you're not quite sure, this is a great resource to really nail that concept down. Moving on, I want to share something that like, after I read this article, I was like, oh yeah, of course. But I didn't think about it until I read this article. And that is the diminishing utility of the MF Mail Compose View Controller. If you're not familiar with the MF Mail Compose View Controller, that's in an app if you hit like the email me button and then it slides up the default mail app as a modal and then you can send an email right from the app. That's the MF Mail Compose View Controller. Now, why the, it's diminishing utility is because as you see, oh, as of iOS 14, like 
the user can change their default mail app. That's brand new this year. Before it was always the mail app. So using the MF Mail Compose View Controller, giving them Apple's mail app was fine, cool. However, now if you wanna give them whatever default they set, you have to kind of like deep link into it using, you know, can open URL. However, the downside to this, yes, this will open up their preferred mail app, whether they have Gmail or whatever they set as their default mail app. However, right, this approach sends the user to their choice of email app and at the same time closes the source app, which is your app. So that's not ideal. So we're in a bit of a weird spot with mail. Um, hopefully, you know, the author says a feature request for iOS 15 is a default mail app should have their own like version of MS or I'm sorry, MF mail composed view controller. We'll see if we get that, but uh, yeah, right now your choice is to either open up the default mail app, which may not be what they use, or open up the mail app that they use, but then close your app. So uh, yeah, bit of a weird spot. Next, I wanna share an article from Guy Rambo, uh, Distributing Mac Apps Outside the App Store, a Quick Start Guide. So as you may know, for Mac apps, it's really not all that uncommon for an app you want, I'm thinking of like Sketch off the top of my head, that's not on the App Store. You have to go to like Sketch's website to download their app. So that would be distributing the, the Mac app off the App Store. And Guy goes through a bunch of pros and cons uh, for all this, you know, cause everything has trade-offs. And then the rest of the article talks about like actually how to execute on distributing your app outside of the App Store. So if you're working on a Mac app and you're kind of not sure, you know, should I go to the app store where they're gonna take 15% or if you're really successful, they're taking 30% uh, or you know, should I distribute it outside the Mac app store where it may be harder to find, right? Cause they have to go to your website. Whereas if they're browsing the Mac app store, they can like discover it, right? Discoverability. So definitely pros and cons, definitely trade-offs. Uh, the, the answer will be unique to you and your business, but uh, Guy Rambo here has you covered on like the pros and cons and then how to distribute it outside the app store if you choose to do that. Moving on to a website, just for some design inspiration when you're building your apps here, it's called ScreenLane. And there's been similar websites like this in the past, but here's a new one that I was not aware of. Um, but essentially you can click on a certain app. We'll, we'll do just the cash row in here as first. And you can see like all their screens in their app. And then a lot of them are animated GIFs. So you can see them in action, as you can see here on the screen. So if you're just looking for inspiration, like this is a podcast app, uh, maybe you're building a similar app and you want some inspiration, see how they're doing things. There you go. And there's, again, a bunch of apps on here, uh, as you can see, uh, right? We'll take a look at the Breeze app. Again, the animated GIFs are really cool. That's what I liked about this site is, is seeing the app in action, right? Because screenshots are one thing, but seeing how the app is actually used and interacted with, cool. So here you get a nice, cool look at their art style. Maybe that'll inspire you. Uh, but the one other thing I like too, is that's looking at apps as a whole, but what you can do here, uh, and it's not fully fleshed out. Maybe the site is pretty new. Hopefully over time, more examples will get in there. But if you see on the left here, elements, right? Like maybe I'm building a calendar app, which I happen to be building. Uh, well, kind of anyway, uh, you can look at calendar and see all the different types of calendars that other apps have used to maybe see, you know, pull a little bit from here, pull a little bit from there to, you know, incorporate your own calendar uh, if you're working on that. So anyway, just a site to give you some uh, inspiration. It's called ScreenLane. As always, the links will be in the description in the GitHub repo. On to the Twitter wisdom portion of the show. We have a tweet from Sahil here. Sahil is the founder of Gumroad. If you're not familiar with Gumroad, that's how a lot of people, you know, distribute eBooks and stuff like that. But anyway, the secret to scaling, uh, and this is like mainly geared towards startups. It could apply to larger Fang type companies, but definitely applies to startups when you're trying to grow and scale, right? Designers who code, engineers who design, marketers who write SQL, et cetera. Like just having more than one skill. That's the point, right? The more skills overlap, the less people need to meet, the more gets shipped. And I've experienced this firsthand. My very first startup about a month in when I was working there, I didn't like the design of the app I was working on. And I decided to like on the weekend, just like redesign it and present it to my boss and say, hey, I think we can do better. Here's what I just came up with this weekend. And they liked that so much that they were like, cool. All right, Sean, you're the designer now. And they ended up firing the design firm that they were working with. So having those skills that can like cross over is very valuable to the startup uh, because that you know, saves them money. I didn't get a pay raise right away for doing two jobs, but a couple months later I did. And a big factor to that was because I was doing like engineering and design. I proved myself to be valuable to the startup. So I guess that's kind of the message here is I know many of you out there are trying to get your first job or you're earlier in your career. And I'm not saying you have to learn how to design or you have to learn how to do these other skills. Of course it's not required, but I think it can only help you. And finally, our LOL of the week here uh, from I Am Developer. Nothing hurts quite like it. Uh, where does it hurt? Headache, stomach ache, 
that domain for that side project you never launched and then it comes up for renewal a year later, just gives you that reminder. We've all been there. All right, that wraps it up for this week's episode. We'll see you in the next one.